Hello and welcome to the Inform Generation Technology Platform once more. My name remains Engineer D. Yusuf Umar. Uh, last time I spoke or oh, I did a video about the Stipendium Hungary Scholarship, which is a scholarship mm -hmm. that is obtainable in Hungary and Nigerians are eligible as beneficiaries of this scholarship among other countries uh, i told you in the last video that uh, when you apply for the stipendium on garrigan scholarship without applying for the bilateral education agreement scholarship which is uh, handled by the federal scholarship board of nigeria you are just like wasting your time so i advised that as we apply for the stipendium on Garukun scholarship, we should keep an eye on the website of the Nigerian Federal Scholarship Board pending when they open the application for the bilateral education agreement scholarship. And now it is open and that is why I am making this video. Yes, the bilateral education agreement scholarship is conducted by the federal scholarship board as i said and uh, it comprises of more countries than just hungary so if you are filling the stipendium hungary scholarship it means that hungary will be one of your choices for the bilateral education agreement scholarship that is the only way that you are going to be nominated if you are successful for the stipendium hungary scholarship give me some time to read through some of the major points in the advertisement for this year so the bilateral education agreement scholarship the countries available for undergraduates for this year that is for 2022 struck 2023 undergraduate russia morocco hungary and egypt then for the postgraduate that is masters phd for the postgraduate we have russia then it was indicated there in bracket that for those whose first degrees we are obtained in Russia. Then we have China, we have Hungary, we have Serbia, we have Romania. Let me say something about Russia for the postgraduate. Uh, what it means that the choice of Russia for postgraduate is only for those who studied in Russia before is because the study there in Russia is in the russian language you have to pass through the language school for a year before you proceed for the actual study which you are going to use russia as the medium of uh, communication during the study um i would like us to to note that Anyone that already have a first degree or a master's in another different language will not find it easy at all to go and study in another language. That is why maybe the Russian government decided to do that. However, some of the countries still expect a postgraduate uh, student to go and study their language and study using their language as a medium of communication one of the examples from the list as i know is romania another example as i know is Serbia. you study the language you study then your medium of study is in their language also but in hungary you study in english then in china you study in english but you take their language program and you must pass you just take 
the language program as a course you must register you must pass the course but your study will be in english so let's take let's make good decisions and for the undergraduates uh, as i know the russia uh, is in the russian language morocco is in french language you also learn french for a year study mm -hmm. with the french language i can see hungary there you study in english in hungary i see egypt i'm not very sure which language you use in egypt you know what i'm going to encourage you not to be afraid of learning another foreign language and studying using the language medium because there are a lot of nigerians who have been studying under the bilateral education agreement scholarship this is a very old scholarship scheme some of the doctors the professors the associate professors in nigeria have undergone study using this scholarship there are professionals in those countries to teach you the language in a way you are going to understand and you can even study using the language so do not be afraid your opportunity may actually be in some of those countries look at the advantages because when you learn another foreign mm -hmm. language it may mm -hmm. be an additional opportunity for you uh, to even get some jobs some positions in fact you may even return to nigeria after your study and companies from those countries for example if you study in china some of the chinese companies here maybe when they see your cv they will prefer to give you a chance or a place more than someone who has just obtained his degrees purely in nigeria maybe the person even have a better grade than you but you will be a preferred candidate because you know about China and then you even know a bit about the Chinese language even when you are not so fluent. Russia also and the rest of them. And maybe for those going for some, some uh, fields like international relations, those that are going into careers that have to do with international um, organizations, I think it will be an added advantage. So don't be afraid if you see any program you want to enroll for in one of these countries just apply uh, then from the advertisement it says all qualified candidates are advised to visit this website okay this is where you can do the application take note www.education.gov.ng www.education.gov.ng and click on read guidelines and then complete the application form online then it says print the completed application form okay another shortcut that you can get to the website which is the same link uh, is www.education.gov.ng slash fsb so you try and log in there but first of all even before the portal become active and stable i would like us to go through what this advertisement contains i don't believe in someone just rushing to make an application. I want you to take your time to do an application and do it very well. That is why the uh, advertisement is not restricted to maybe one day or two days or so. You are given time to take your time and apply gradually, carefully, without making mistakes. If not, you are going to screen yourself out. You know there are people who are applying for job uh, i once saw somebody who was applying for a military job and then they say the height for for men should be minimum of 1.7 meters but because he was rushing to fill the form he was putting 1.6 
something meters. So I was passing and I saw what they were doing on the screen. I wanted to go, but I came back. I said, sir, if you continue with this application, you have already screened yourself out at this stage. You cannot even proceed. You cannot be considered for the next stage. So I am advising that whenever you are making applications like this, do it gradually. And don't depend on internet cafes because that is where you will try to rush and do things. If you don't have a laptop, borrow one and let it be with you for some time. When you are applying for stipendium hungaricum, for example, you have to take your time, write your motivation letters, write your research plans, write all the relevant essays carefully, do proofreading, and even ask for other people to help you do some proofreading. You yourself also use some software tools, for example, Grammarly, to do further proofreading before you submit it. So you don't do it in a rushing mood. It is not by how fast you apply, but how well you apply. So back to the advertisement. Uh, the next thing there is fields of study. And it said for undergraduates level, the fields that are available, these are like general fields that are available. I told you bilateral education agreement scholarship, you have several countries which I listed that you can go to. So some of these fields that are mentioned may be applicable to some countries and not applicable to others, while some may be applicable to all of them or to more than one of them. So the, at the undergraduate level, engineering is available, geology, agriculture, sciences, mathematics, environmental sciences, sports, law, social sciences, biotechnology, architecture, medicine, and then for medicine it put in bracket very limited. Then pilot engineering, then neurologist, then for the postgraduate, it's a master's degree and PhD in all fields. Master's degree and PhD in all fields. Yes, for the undergraduate, you can see the fields that are mentioned almost cut across all fields already. Yeah, so to me, all of the both of them are in all fields. But the most important thing is to figure out which countries are offering the programs that you want to enroll for which countries yes how can you know that is quite difficult is quite hidden to people but then for example for hungary you know it is when you go back to my video my previous video you can get those programs it's like an expo from the stipendium hungary scholarship so if you put any program that is not listed there uh, under the bilateral education scholarship and choose Hungary, you're just wasting your time. So, but for the other countries, how will you know the programs that are obtainable there is not quite easy, but we'll come back to that and see what we can learn based on experience of uh, past beneficiaries. So, and it says here that the eligibility criteria remains for undergraduate. All applicants for undergraduate degree courses must possess a minimum qualification of five distinctions, A's and B's, in the West African Examination Council or the West African Senior school certificate examination the may june only in the subjects relevant to the field of study and those five distinctions must include english language and mathematics certificates should not be more than two years old for non-african countries that is for this year non-african countries 
that are in the list like Hungary and the rest of them will only accept WIEC certificates of the year 2020 and the year 2021. And then for African countries, the age of the certificate is one year. African countries like where? Morocco, for example, Egypt, they will only accept the WIEC certificates gotten or obtained in this year, 2021. Yes, WIEC for 2021 are ready. So that is the only certificate that is acceptable. And the age limits for undergraduate is from 17 to 20 years old. Then for postgraduate scholarship, all applicants for postgraduate degree courses must hold a first degree with a first class and second class upper division. All applicants must have completed NYSC program and the age limit is 35 years for masters and 40 years for PhD. NYIC discharged or exemption certificates only are accepted and evidence of readiness to be released by an employer. So let me say a little thing about this criteria. Uh, for undergraduates, the five distinctions that is mentioned there from my experience uh, the Federal Scholarship Board are not so strict about it. At least have a five credits, let me say. If you have the distinctions, it's good because there is ranking. They are ranking you based on your grade, based on how you applied properly, the orderliness of your application, and based on your performance in the aptitude test. So if you are having weak grades, for example, even a C6 is a pass. Even a C5, C4, they are all pass grades. So if you're having C6, maybe you're having three C6 and C4 or so to compete with the person that is having A1, B2, B3, is not easy because he already scored a higher point than you from SSC then will go and also jostle for other uh, uh, scores, maybe from the aptitude test and some other areas, maybe the credentials that are required, the orderliness of the credential, the choice made by the person and other things. So if you know you already have a weak point in area of grit you should work hard in the other areas also uh, the issue of uh, the age limit is so important yes for the undergraduate um, if you are not up to some of the ages that are indicated you know some countries will not accept you to be there some of the countries even if they accept you, you have to go with your parents because you are considered to be a minor. You are not considered to be matured enough to be in a foreign country on your own, study and live on your own. So because of that, and there is no provision by the Federal Scholarship Board to take your parents, your guardian or other people to, to, to accompany you to the country of study. Um, because of that, you are not qualified or you are disqualified when you are a minor for those countries. So the age range being 17 to 20 years for undergraduate still depends on the countries because I studied in Hungary and I know that, uh, uh, an adult is from 18 years old. 
so when you are 17 years old also i think if it is hungary that is your choice you will may face difficulties of being nominated then for the postgraduate scholarship uh the comment i can make in terms of each let's be serious about it in terms of grade if you have second class lower oh i think you will not be given attention unless you have other means or you are lucky just like in the undergraduate if you have neko some people still manage to go with neko yes and so some of them are very lucky maybe the screening committee will not will get tired and will not be strict about it and allow them to enter the hall to sit for the exams um, then the age 35 years for postgraduate master's degree and then for phd is 40 years limit and then you say the nyc or exemption certificate is the only thing that is acceptable there is no any other letter that will be acceptable i mean you must serve i was at the federal scholarship board some years ago to attend uh, an interview uh, for the commonwealth scholarship and fellowship plan i was surprised how they were strict about the national youth service corps certificate that is the nyc certificate a candidate was denied access to the interview even for accreditation because he was still a serving cop member he was denied they didn't consider the the transportation fare he spent to come to abuja so as for federal scholarship but they are so strict about this one don't say you're going abroad so it doesn't matter uh, the countries abroad don't know about the national youth service no uh, the federal scholarship board is a nominating agency and if they blocked you from going to the next stage you cannot go in any other way so and there is another point about the postgraduate category again in the eligibility you say evidence of readiness to be released by an employer if you are a civil servant or you are working even with private firm or so you need to apply for a letter from your employer a letter that will be containing their own consent that you are going for this study and they are ready to release you to go for the study and maybe they may mention one way or the other that this this study you are embarking on is going to contribute to the success or to the betterment of the organization so it is very important and such letters must be on the letter headed you know those things letter headed there should be stamp and the rest don't go and forge this kind of letters there may be a way to investigate also on the advertisement there is a segment known as general note for all applicants. I read, since the BEA countries are non-English speaking, applicants should be prepared to undertake a mandatory one year foreign language course of the country of choice, which will be the standard medium of instruction. I've said this earlier, although there are exceptions, Hungary is an exception, china is somehow an exception so these are general statements because the scholarship cut across quite some number of countries secondly second point there all applicants for hungarian second point there all applicants for hungarian scholarship can apply for up to two fields of study in order of preference and must visit the website www.stipendiumhungaricum.hu which was opened 18th november 2021 to close 15th january 2022 you see now 
this is what I or what I was telling us during the stipendium Hungarian scholarship video yes it's clearly stating here if you didn't apply for that one you lose it if you apply for stipendium Hungarian scholarship without applying for the BEA scholarship you lose also so you must do both of them and be nominated in both of them and succeed on both of them before you are a successful candidate another thing to note all applicants for russian postgraduate scholarship must have acquired their first degree in russia yes i earlier spoke about this you must have studied in russia initially before you come so that means the, those that did their undergraduate in Russia, they have upper hand here. Yes, the, the competition will be less for them if they are applying for Russia again because people who study in other countries cannot apply for the postgraduate programs in Russia. So another point is that all applicants should upload the following certificates online undergraduate should upload WIAC certificate postgraduate first degree certificate or first degree and master's certificate that is for those applying for PhD and then their WIAC certificate their indigent letter and NYSC discharge certificates additional notes candidate nominated by the board will be required to submit to the federal scholarship board the following authenticated copies of academic certificates data page of the current international passport is data page of their current international passport specified medical reports from government hospitals birth certificate birth certificate at indigent letter police clearance certificate where necessary okay let me talk about the additional notes uh, these are mostly required after you have succeeded during the application stage if you have them and on your form if there are provisions for that you may confidently upload them or impute the information from them but if you don't have them there is no problem you can apply you can go through all the screening stages and then when you succeed for you to proceed to look for visa to proceed to other uh, uh to to other stages of the processes you know you have to provide all these you say authenticated copies of the academic certificate you may be having your academic certificate but uh you know you just can and upload during application and nobody will know whether it is authenticated or not but when you succeed you know you have to present it to the federal scholarship but physically there they will check whether it's authenticated so when you succeed you have to go to the federal ministry of education in abuja and get your certificate verified about how authentic they are and then authenticated for you there will be uh, uh, a seal or stamping and some signature on them uh, laminated uh, certificates are uh, unfortunately just like mine uh, some portion will be cut maybe using razor blade to get a space for the stamping for the seal for the signature on your certificate uh, and then you have to authenticate uh, the educational certificates those are the basic things to authenticate. Maybe your SSC, your degree certificate, 
your transcript, academic transcript, those are authenticated at Federal Ministry of Education. If you want to go for further authentication, you go to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where you authenticate both these educational uh, credentials plus others like certificate of indigen, like maybe marriage certificate and things like that, because it's going to help you out there. The Federal Scholarship Board is going to guide you on that when you succeed. Then another thing indicated there, the data page of your current international passport. Without international passport, you cannot travel out of uh, Nigeria to these countries, this, uh, uh, these uh, BEA countries. So you must go for, you know, at that point, you can spend money confidently because it is worth it. You are already seeing that, yes, I have gotten this scholarship. So you are confident enough, you can spend the money it is worth it. Uh, also, specify medical report. You just get medical certificate of fitness from the hospital, from a medical doctor that will show that you are physically fit enough. Uh, you are mentally fit enough. Your state of uh, mental well-being, I mean, is stable that you can go abroad and study you can go to that destination and study um, it may be very simple for some countries uh, there are samples that are given for some countries that are template like china there's a template that is given that you must use is uh, called uh, uh, is it medical physical examination form diseases or other things that are supposed to be checked about you, conditions that are supposed to be checked about the candidate are indicated there. And then the doctor directly uh, uh, imputes the results found on that template, on that certificate they gave or they provided. Then for Hungary also, there are diseases that are specified that you must test. Yes, I know there is HIV, I know there is tuberculosis, I know, and they say any other epidemic. I think hepatitis A, B, C is also indicated. So, depending on which country, but all these ones come after nomination. So, you don't have problem at this stage. Just have a knowledge about them. Also, it's a birth certificate and indigent letter. I think these are basics we should have but i will talk about the birth certificate the federal scholarship board recognizes only birth certificate obtained from the national population commission there is a birth certificate you know we, in nigeria we are almost confused which birth certificate to use because we have birth certificates that are given in the hospital we can obtain birth certificate uh, in form of um, a declaration of age from the court we can obtain from national population commission and all that different sources maybe from computer center they just type birth certificate and give you and we are fond of changing our ages to suit the job or whatsoever we are applying at times you even forget which one is your correct date of birth so the most important thing or the most important birth certificate the recognized birth certificate by the federal scholarship board is obtainable at the national population commission go there if you don't have it and obtain one and use it for this application so that you will not be screened out for a reason that is unknown to you are you getting me so there are differences in the birth certificate those that are born in 1992 and after i think mostly they are given the certificate for free because the national population commission began this uh 
provision of birth certificate in 1992 and they are considered to be minors so unicef is paying for them so those that are older who are born before 1992 the national population commission will charge you some fee and then there is a certificate of birth that will be produced for you yes it looks a bit or quite it looks completely different from the birth certificate but it is also recognized by the federal scholarship board yeah i earlier said that uh, we are going to come back again to another i earlier said that we are going to come back again to a portion we jumped which was talking about how can you know the programs that are available in these BEA countries because the Federal Scholarship Board didn't mention it in the advertisement and they will not mention it. You are left to figure out. For example, if you are looking for medicine to study and then you choose Hungary and probably there is no provision for medicine for undergraduate in Hungary you are already screening yourself out so over the years i was thinking the federal scholarship board will change this and make life easy but since there is no any change we have to devise a means for us to know where to choose according to our fields of study okay for Hungary, it is already simplified by the Stipendium Hungarian Scholarship, which uh, is still, the application is still ongoing. You can go to the website, you download the call for application, you check there the programs that are available for Nigerians. I mentioned them in my previous video. So for Hungary, it is already solved. For Russia, you know, almost all programs obtainable in russia medicine is even available you know but then i would like you to do this for russia for egypt and for other countries go to the website www.education.gov.ng slash fsb and then there are some pdf files that are uh, containing the list of uh, 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 beneficiaries of these scholarships download some of them or download all of them download those let me say download those that have to do with the countries that are available at your own category this year and check what kind of programs that the people uh, uh, under or who are studying in those countries under this scholarship are uh, studying you are going to get an expo there for example when you download for russia you're going to see various programs that nigerians are undergoing study on them there in russia you check that off uh, for example um sabia you're going to find some of them you check for romania you're going to get some of them china you'll get some of them hungary is not there but you don't have problem because you are covered by the the partner scholarship stipendium hungarian scholarship morocco too i think i couldn't find it there but uh from my interaction with a past beneficiary he said that all almost all fields are available for BEA applicant in Morocco. He said, however, the postgraduate favors mostly those who obtain their first degree there in Morocco, and then it is mostly the engineering fields and fields of commerce that are available. That is according to one of the beneficiaries. So you go to the website. As I said, do your download some of the PDF files. Also use wisdom 
to look at the number of people that are on the list per countries to make your choice. For example, Russia have a lot of people clearly showing that their slots is very high. As I know, I think it's up to 100 slots for Russia. Hungary is also 100 slot, I said in my previous video. Uh, and the other countries, I don't know, maybe they are, I think Morocco is also high, but I don't know what number precisely. And some are as little as 10, oh, some numbers that are very little or even below 10. So we should be very careful when choosing uh, uh, the BES countries. Let it be according to our fields, our uh, let me say our pre preferred fields of studies. Let it also be according to advantages we can take, the possibilities, the high probability of us winning this scholarship. Um, more also, I want to say that there are many other things to know about this scholarship, the worth of the scholarship. Some of these BEA countries, when you get there, apart from the sponsorship of the Nigerian government, the government of those countries are going to support you, just like in Hungary, I discussed in the last video. Uh, and then some of the countries uh, gives very little support. And then when you are in trouble that maybe the Nigerian government didn't send their money on time, then you will really be in trouble. While some of them give higher amount. I cannot start giving you from countries to countries what I know about this because it is much and it may probably confuse you. The currencies are different. My advice for you is to look for my book which I wrote, Effective Scholarship Search. I have a chapter that is dedicated in explaining detail of the worth of the scholarship. It explained for bilateral education agreement scholarship the conditions for uh, the Nigerian students from each of the uh, BEA countries uh, I could gather information about. So you can check what is the word of the scholarship. You will check so that you don't take yourself to places where you will suffer. Yes, I know that the Federal Scholarship Board, uh, their provision is adequate, but what if they don't do up to? What if there is a delay? What if one or two problems occur there that maybe the conversion of money you face difficulties what if you have a lot of responsibilities and even the money that they are giving that is much will not be enough for you because you have responsibilities maybe you have families that you are leaving behind what of if you resigned from your own job before going maybe for those that are working with private organization they may not be given the opportunity to go and study and come back their places of work or those working with government if you have not met some requirement or some conditions you might not be allowed to go and study and still be on pay that is your salary may not be flowing so you will be depending solely on these scholarships if that is your condition check very well look for the countries where the payment is good the book is going to be very important for you. Um, you can get it. You can get the e-copy by uh, logging on to www.ebookhawker.com. Then you search for effective scholarship search. That is the title of the book, Effective Scholarship Search. The book was written by myself. It is going to help you. There are more details about scholarship that we cannot mention here. Yeah.
Uh, now I will say that uh, uh, when I post this video, you are at the liberty to ask questions at the comment section. I will always answer. Quite unfortunate, I wanted to make this video a live streaming video so that I can interact with you people. I can answer questions live but uh, something interrupted is so because of that we'll take questions at this comment section and then i will answer all of them i will give all the links in the comment section remember to subscribe to this channel more and more are coming i mean better things than this one better stuffs um and also like this post thank you all the best in your application. See you at the top. Bye.